Hello crafty friends, my name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl, and it is time for a new oh so inspired collaboration hop. I hope you'll stick around to see who inspired us this month, see what I'm going to create, and find out how you can hop along to all of the other creators channels. Each month, I host a fun collaboration here on YouTube called Oh So Inspired. I really believe that no matter our style or skill level, that we can all be inspired by each other. So what my team and I do each month is take the same inspiration piece and create something new based upon it. It could be taking the color palette, the layout, Maybe the original card has a butterfly. You could put a butterfly on your card. Just anything that inspires you. And I hope as you hop around to all of the videos today that you're inspired as well to get crafty. To find the other videos in the hop, there is a playlist link in the description box below and a link of all the collaborators' channels. I know that they would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. This month, we are taking inspiration from a card created by Rochelle Block, and it is up on screen now. You can find the original blog post for this video and her Instagram account linked down in the description box. What I like most about this card, besides those beautiful, fun colors, is how there is that opening or that cut into the front that is a circle, but only part of it lifts up. I have done book binding cards in the past, which is when you score part of the front and adhere it flat so it doesn't open, but I have never made one with a fun cut. So today, that's what I'm going to do. In front of me are the main supplies that I'll be using. Instead of doing a circle, I thought since I had this super fun paper from Photoplay, it's called Tula and Norbert's Sweet as Honey, I thought that I would use a hexagon shape because there are some bee and hexagon themes in the pattern papers. So I got that out, which I haven't yet decided on which paper I'm going to use, so we'll take a look at it in a little bit and figure that one out. And I also got out this nesting hexagon set and it was from Lifestyle Crafts. So this thing is probably 15 years old because they are no longer in business. But I, what I loved about this was the, the amount of different nesting shapes that I got that I'm going to be able to make just a little frame that I want to um, want to do on my card. Hopefully this is going to turn out okay. As I get into the process, I will tell you about other products and tools I use, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I'm going to pick the three papers out for my card. This package contained two of each pattern paper and they are double sided. So I'll go through quickly here and show you a look at each of the pieces. Not only do you get some great patterns with fun colors, but here at the end you'll see that there is a sheet of stickers as well. And that's what I'll use today to embellish or put on the focal point of my card. When I need to choose three patterns that go together, I like to start by choosing one that has a lot of patterns and a lot of colors. I really like this one with the wood grain background because it also incorporated some hexagons. Next, I want to pick a pattern that is pretty subtle but brings out some of the colors in that first piece. And finally, I want another more subtle pattern paper, and for this I thought I would want to have one that had the sunflowers, so I pulled that piece, and I also pulled the wood grain not knowing what I would want for the third. Now you know that I love a wood grain, but this just seemed like a little bit too much since the first pattern paper already had that in the background. So here's the three pieces I chose for my card. For the next step, I brought in a card base that I had pre-made and my score buddy. And we're going to be putting a score line on the front of this. 
To figure out where it goes, I brought in the hexagon that I'm going to want to use, and I kind of lined that up in figuring out where it would look good, and I want the score line to be kind of in the corners there at the top and then at the bottom. That was right around a one and a quarter inches where it looked good, so I opened my card back up. The original score line was at four and a quarter, so I'm going to go to the left and I'm going to make a score at three inches. That way when I take it away from the scoreboard and turn it around, that score line is now one and a quarter inches to the right of the fold. Now I'm going to work on die cutting the split window. For this, I lined up the two corners of my hexagon along that score line and I'm going to hold it in place with a couple pieces of scotch removable tape. Now when you take this to your die cutter so it doesn't cut the whole hexagon out of the front, you want to line up the edge of your cutting plate with that score line. Now mine didn't turn out perfectly, it did cut a little bit past where I wanted it to, but you know what, I, we're just going to go with it and make it work. The next thing I want to do is prepare my split window by adhering the pieces that I need to, so I started folding back on those score lines. And now I'm going to bring in my ATG and add adhesive to the back of that little skinny kind of one and a quarter inch strip area and to the back of the partial hexagon. That way when you push these back together, when you go to open it, only that small flap with the partial hexagon cut out is going to open up. Now it's time to start adding those pattern papers. I'm going to be using the more colorful ones on each of the front panels, so for now I set the yellow to the side. Now to cover the front panels, I want a piece that is one by five and a quarter and a piece that is two and three quarters by five and a quarter. So I start by cutting my sunflower piece at five and a quarter inches tall and then cut a strip at one inch. On the next piece of paper, I wanted to make sure that some of those sunflowers would show up, so I kept that in mind when making my cut. I made the same cut at five and a quarter inches tall, and then from the left side of the paper, which is now the right, I made my cut at two and three quarters. I brought back in that same hexagon that I used to do the die cutting earlier, and now I'm gonna use it to cut partial hexagons out of each pattern paper. I'm going to start by lightly tacking down the sunflower paper and then I bring the hexagon die over and fit it in the opening so it won't wiggle at all and that means it's exactly where it needs to be. And to hold the die in place, once again with die cutting, I'm using some scotch removable tape. Now you can see when I bring it back in, there's just a little bit of the hexagon and now all I have to do is add adhesive to the back of this and then line it up with the hexagon that is in there. I then cut and place the second piece of pattern paper in the same way. If you're enjoying today's video and you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would take a minute to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. This way you'll be the first to know when I have a new video posted. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. For the third piece of pattern paper, I brought in a hexagon that was one size smaller than what I have used so far, and I cut a little section out of the corner and took that off screen to die cut it. When that was die cut, I added adhesive to the back, and then I centered it on the hexagon that was partially cut out. I love that it has that white border, and I have to say, I am in love with this type of card. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now it's time to create the focal point. For this, I chose a couple stickers from the sticker sheet. I wanted to kind of go with the bee and the honey theme, so I chose a little sentiment that reads, you're my honey bee, and then I chose a little bee that had a honey dripper. Now because these are stickers and I wanted to pop them up, I need to take off the sticky. So for this, I brought in an embossing buddy bag and just tapped that on the back until they weren't sticky any longer. This way, if the card does get pressed, the stickers will stay popped up. Once that was done, off camera, I added some foam tape to the back of each piece, and then I took a little bit of time to figure out where I wanted those to go on the final card. 
Once I figured it out, I pulled the release paper and got them adhered down. You do want to make sure that nothing is going to prevent that front from opening. I finished the card off by adding some gold diamond dots to the front and a little sticker from the kit on the inside. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to create today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to click on that playlist link in the description box below or wait for the end card so you can watch the playlist of all of the other collaborators. I know that the hop is going to be so inspiring. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.